The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller. Or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder. In the last video, we learned about variables and how they need to be declared in order to hold different types of data. In this video, we're going to learn about data types. Data types are important to understand because they determine what kinds of data variables can store. But before we get into that, let's look at how to define the data type for a variable. You define the data type for a variable when you declare it. The data type goes before the variable name. This is called the keyword. If you look on the Arduino reference page, you'll be able to find every keyword in the Arduino language. Keywords are special words in the Arduino programming language reserved for things like functions, operations, and data types. Keywords can't be used for variable names. To declare the data type of a variable, you enter a data type keyword before the variable name. The best one to use will depend on the size and type of value the variable will hold. The data type determines how much memory will be reserved for that variable. Some data types only use one byte of memory per variable, while others use up to four bytes. So now let's look at what data types are available for us to use. The most common data type is the integer. Variables declared as an int can hold whole number values like 3, 25, or 1023. There is a limit to how big the number can be though. Integer variables use two bytes of memory, so they can hold up to two to the 16 different numbers, which is 65,536. But ints can hold positive and negative values, so the range is actually split in half between negative 32,768 and positive 32,767. There's also an unsigned int data type. Unsigned means that the number is positive. Unsigned integer variables take up two bytes of memory. But since they only hold positive values, they can hold integers from 0 to 65,535. The long data type is used to store large integers. Long variables use 4 bytes of memory, so they can hold up to 2 to the 32 different numbers. But long variables are signed, so that number is split between positive and negative values. The unsigned long data type also uses 4 bytes of memory. But it can only store positive integers, so it can hold numbers from 0 to 4,294,967,295. Long and int data types can only store integers, or whole numbers. But what if you need to store a value with a decimal point or fraction? Use the float or double data type. Float and double variables can store positive and negative fractional numbers. They both do exactly the same thing, so the keywords are interchangeable. They also both use 4 bytes of memory. The values they store can range from 3.4 times 10 to the 38 to negative 3.4 times 10 to the 38. When declaring a variable with a float or a double, the number must be written with a decimal point or it'll be treated as an integer. Something to keep in mind is that math is much slower with floats and doubles compared to ints. So your program will run faster if you can get away with using ints instead of floats or doubles. Sometimes you need a variable that only needs to store two values. For example, when you read a digital pin or write to an LED, the only values you need to store are high and low, or 1 and 0, or true and false. For these types of variables, you can use the Boolean data type. Boolean variables can only store two possible values, true or false, high or low, and 1 or 0. 
they only use one byte of memory. If your variable only needs to hold a single letter, number, or character, you can use the char data type. The char data type stores character values like ABC123 and asterisk, percent, and dollar signs. Any ASCII character can be stored in char variables. To store the actual character, use single quotation marks around the character when you declare the variable. You can also store ASCII values from negative 128 to positive 127. You can find the ASCII values for each character on a table like this. Each character has a unique number assigned to it. When you declare the char variable, use the ASCII number without quotation marks. For example, this will store the capital letter A in the variable. Using the ASCII numbers with char variables makes it possible to do arithmetic on letters, which could be useful for incrementing or decrementing through the alphabet. Char variables are also nice because they only use one byte of data. The byte data type acts sort of like an unsigned char. It can store positive integers from 0 to 255. It only uses one byte of memory, so it's a good way to save program space if you need to store small values like pin numbers. The const variable modifier is not really a data type, but it still has an effect on how the variable behaves. The const keyword makes the variable constant. Once a constant variable is declared and set equal to something, it can't be changed later on in the program. Use const for things like pin numbers and mathematical constants, things you know aren't going to change in the sketch. Const makes the variable read only, so it doesn't use any SRAM, which reduces the size of your program. We've looked at a bunch of different data types so far. Using the optimal data type for a variable will save you memory and decrease the size of your program, making it run faster and more efficiently. In most cases, you can get away with using int to declare variables, but if you're running short on memory or you want to optimize your sketch, using the right data type will help. For example, if you know that your variable will never store a value greater than 255, it would make more sense to declare it as a byte instead of an int. That'll save you one byte of memory. It might not seem like much, but it adds up quickly when you consider that the Arduino Uno only has 2,000 bytes of memory to store variables. In the next video, we'll learn about mathematical operators and how to do calculations on the Arduino. Knowing how to do math on the Arduino will come in handy when we start using sensors and have to convert raw sensor readings to units like degrees Celsius or meters per second squared. SunFounder is my go-to source for sensors, modules, and other parts for the Arduino and Raspberry Pi. They have a huge selection of STEM, robotics, and IoT kits, and lots of useful sensors and modules. Every product has an online tutorial with wiring diagrams and example code. They also offer free shipping on all orders, with no minimum. Give them a try at www.sunfounder.com next time you need to order some parts.